Battletech Historical Turning Points Mallory's World The Desolation of Combat by Catalyst Games Read by Shrapnel First Prince Ian Davian's face cracked in a grim, lopsided grin as the enemy awesome crumpled to the broken canyon floor. His battered atlas eased back into the swirling dust, kicked up by the brief but furious battle. The awesome was the last of the second sword of Light's Command Company assault lance, but the rest of the company was drawing near. Despite the inflated views others might spout in the tabloid trides, the First Prince knew he was a capable mech warrior. Even so, he was hardly the match of the truly skilled and formidable samurai of the Combine, who were closing on his rearguard position, ever since sending the rest of his own command lance on up the pass. Orders some of them nearly disobeyed, until he shouted his throat raw for them to continue the retreat. It felt like he had become one with his mech. Ungainly and slow at the best of times under his guidance, the Atlas had since responded with a grace and fluidity he'd never before achieved, though he was sure the swirling grip played a large part in his enemy's weapons fire going astray. How he'd been able to avoid such violence for so long baffled him. Having single-handedly overcome three enemies only once before in his years of experience, he had in the past half hour dispatched an entire lance of assault mechs from the Draconis Combine's elite second sword of light. He pursed his lips as he noted a large number of the enemy closing in. Returns were intermittent with the geography of the valley, obscuring his senses. He had read and been told innumerable times of grand, heroic last stands, though he had never expected to be making one himself. But he knew that without slowing these pursuers, they would overtake his fourth Davian guards once again. At least the narrowing of the valley forced the enemy mechs to funnel through one at a time, bringing them one at a time into his targeting reticule. Ian closed his eyes and took a deep breath, trying to make peace with the god he'd never really had time for. He hoped his men would make it far enough to form a defensible position before he was overcome. A long, slow breath rattled out of him as he tightened his grip on the controls. Through the settling dust, he spotted a Drac Warhammer briefly among the twists and turns of the pass. Calmly, he took aim at where it would emerge from the last bend in the valley and prepared to fire. Every kill here would stall the enemy's relentless pursuit just that much longer. The Warhammer dashed ungainly from the canyon's cover. The roar of the Atlas's Class 20 autocannon echoed off the rock walls. The shot slammed home, savaging the Warhammer's left side with a jagged line from leg to torso. The enemy's return fire snapped and flit all around the Atlas slamming into the dirt and scrub nearby, leaving Ian unscathed. Before he could swing his drifting reticule back on target, the Warhammer slid behind the next bend in the valley. Suddenly, the comm crackled to life. Uh, uh. The panicky voice belonged to Captain Hillness, his adjunct in the command company. Fall back now. The Kellhounds are here. They'll cover your withdrawal. For just an instant, Ian glanced at the comm panel. In that moment, his fatalism broke, and so did his focus. It took a second to realize what had happened. No longer did he feel the certainty of death upon his shoulders. Instead, it had fled with Hillness's words, replaced with a hope of potential rescue. All he had to do was hold on for a few more minutes and salvation would arrive. He silently thanked God for the reprieve his gaze returning to the battlefield before him. Though he'd taken his eyes from the cockpit's view for only a moment, it was one Ian instantly wanted back. The dust had blown open as a curtain, and through it stepped the Drac Warhammer. 
He'd missed his opportunity to shove his payload into the enemy machine. Now, like a gunfighter from the ancient past, the Warhammer's arms leveled and spat their hellish energies. Time slowed for the first prince, crystallizing with diamond clarity. A glint of light from the Warhammer's missile launcher as it caught a hint of the sun through the sudden break in the choking dust cloud. The red paint of the Drax Warhammer reflected the waning sunlight, the actinic flare of discharge. In that moment, Ian felt the familiar weight of the Neuro Helmet, the warm embrace of his command couch, thoughts of his family and friends flashing in a haze of love and longing. As the crackling energies enveloped the cockpit with blue-violet lightning, First Prince Ian Davian thought it was the most beautiful sight he'd ever seen. To save a prince, death before dishonor. From Cockpit Recorder Transcript, GCL-3492, Captain Carol O'Kathane, 1st Company, 2nd Mech Battalion, Kelhound Mercenary Regiment. Down, Captain. The Prince is down. Prince Ian? You mean the Warhammer has him? Affirmative. The Prince just took a bad hit to the head of his Atlas. The Mech just seemed to lean over on its side. Copy that. Recon 1. Our ETA is four minutes to your position. What do you make of Prince Ian's condition? Any sound love? Negative, sir. It looks like the entire right side of the Mech's head is caved in. The heat is still buckling the armor plate on the upper torso. No one could have survived in the middle of that. Say the Prince Ian is dead? Captain, if he was alive, he would have ejected by now. His mech's head is... it's all torn up. I've got readings of two plus enemy lances coming up the direction the Kurita Warhammer took. Roger. ETA is two minutes. The other units of the four Davin guards are right behind us. We'll keep those Kurita slugs busy so they can check out on the Prince. Affirmative, sir. Engaging now. A Cathane to attack with fire lances. Well, you heard gone and the Kurinas are after his body. They're not going to get it. Attack plan Abel Baker. We'll hold him until the force guards come on. And watch your heat. I don't want anyone else lost in this melting desert. Initiate attack plan now. We interrupt your regular programming for breaking news. This just in. In another of a series of attacks by House Karita, troops on Mallory's World, the Second Sword of Light Regiment, supported by the 24th Deeran Regulars, landed and engaged the defending 17th Avalon Hussars. Commanding the 4th Davian Guards, Prince Ian Davian responded to the Combine Invasion. After Davian Force's initial success, the Karita units mauled the 17th Avalon Hussars, leaving the 4th Guards vulnerable. Prince Ian summoned the Kelhounds Regiment, which was 10 days away on Mara. By the time the Kelhounds arrived, the situation had become grave for the defenders. The 24th Deeran Regulars had cut off the 4th Davian Guards from their lines of communication and forced them to manoeuvre into the desert. The pursuing 2nd Sword of Light Regiment forced the 4th Davian Guards deeper into the desert. Finally, a desolate pass, Prince Ian turned his worn and battered atlas to face the warhammer of the commander of the Second Sword, Yoringa Karita. In a desperate personal combat that gave his regiment time to withdraw, Ian Davian was killed. Before other Karita units could carry his body off the field, however, the long-awaited Kelhounds arrived. The Kelhounds drove away the Second Sword of Light, allowing the 4th Davian Guards to recover Prince Ian's body. And now, the weather. Well, there we have it folks. The Prince is dead. Long live the Prince. Now for some of you, you might be thinking, I've heard this before. Well, you'd be right. The first part of the tale is from episode 4, The Desolation of Combat. But all this stuff after, I found lurking around in the original folder that I'd just forgotten about. 
It was recorded as extras, but I never got around to putting it in or editing it for whatever reason. So here it is in its intended format for you. Obviously recorded on my old gear before I got into my rhythm and everything else. So I've touched up as best I can with what little knowledge I've gained. As for an update on the channel, I've got new stuff on its way. I'm editing it as we speak but I wanted to take the opportunity to actually complete this episode and get it back out as I apparently always intended it to be. So thank you everyone for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, leave a like, leave a comment. I'll always reply to them. If there's something you want to hear, leave a comment, drop me a DM on my Insta. I'm always out looking for inspiration. And until next time, Mech Jocks, I've been Shrapnel. Stay safe out there. Bye.